Welcome to episode 31 of Descent into the Wormhole, where we discuss everything from ancient civilization to modern day social issues and everything in between. I'm Les. And I'm Stevie J. And today we're having a look at Valentine's Day. Was it a pagan ritual or a day of love? Very interesting, very interesting, because we've covered some of these pagan celebrations, rituals before. Um, and we've covered true love, actually, in one of our previous, uh, or unconditional love in one of our previous yeah. podcasts. And I want to say right off the bat, obviously, obviously buying gifts for someone is true love, right? That's the only way I interpret it. <laughs> the bigger the gift, the bigger the love, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> the bigger the rock, the more he loves you. Oh, we are obviously being facetious. Like that is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever said. I think I, I can't imagine actually putting the uh, like the amount of emotion and love uh, on a scale like that. You know, the yeah. the bigger the gift, the bigger the love. I mean, it's just yeah. insane to me. But but it's uh it's out there, and that's what we're kind of told by society, isn't it? Yeah, I even found a few articles that say what to get it and i i i was very confused from the very beginning because they they labeled it they packaged it as a day for lovers right <laughs> it's the day of love yeah uh last time i checked that involves two people mm -hmm. and the articles that i found was what are the dudes supposed to buy for the girls depending on, and the one I was reading, which really caught my attention, um, was what to buy, depending on how long you've been together for. And, and, and it's so funny, because when, when you first mentioned that, my response was, well, hang on, how about, you know, what does this lovely lady like or enjoy, and maybe base mm -hmm. the gift idea on that, instead of mm -hmm. on this list that's been provided by, <laughs> no doubt, commercial outlets. At some point, yes. like, oh yes, there was links to flower shops and links to jewelry <laughs> stores. There was there was links all over the place of in there. Of course, of course. Yeah. But the other one, the other one that you found, which I found super interesting too, and it ties into all of that, is how much money people spend on Valentine's Day. Holy shit! Oh my like, god! And what is it estimated that this year, twenty-seven billion dollars, yeah. not million. And that's in the U.S. Billion dollars. And that's just a U.S. Yep. I, account. I, I, you can tell. I'm speechless. Like yeah. <laughs> $27 yeah. billion. Dollars. Now, okay, I'm all for, I am all for buying a loved one a gift. That's fine. All for that. What I'm not for is these companies marketing Valentine's Day as the day to do that. Right. Like, I, I would I would so much prefer for it to be like a random Thursday. Just yes. any any random day, you should be, you know, showing that appreciation and gratitude for the person that you love. And if you want to do that mm -hmm. via a gift, great. But Valentine's Day is meaningless. It's not the day. It's uh it's a day for making money. That's what it is. It is, and it I've never been one for for it. Um mm -hmm. just much much like Christmas and Easter and all the other ones, I'm just I'm just not on board. And right. I but I appreciate that other people are. It just really it breaks my heart to see so many people get very um, down and out and mm -hmm. depressed and yeah. possibly angry and feel less about themselves because they are single on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Okay. That does not, that does not uh, merit, like that, that's not a ratio of your worth. Like that, that's not yeah. a, an indicator of how amazing you are. Yes. Just because you're single. Great point. And it's not, you know, there are so many people out there like that who go through that, but that never gets marketed, does it? You never see that no. in all the big promos. It's all, oh, Valentine's Day, you know, everybody's getting love on Valentine's Day. Well, sadly, they're not, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's a day for those people that highlights that they're not getting that. So, right. yeah, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of sadness too on uh, on Valentine's Day, which it doesn't need to be because really it's just another day. Um, yeah. But talking about you know, and we mentioned the money and all the commercial side of it. 
But it didn't always used to be about money, did it? No, it did not. And for those of you who quite possibly are a little, you know, upset that quite possibly you're going to be single on Valentine's Day, I'm hoping this is going to change your mind of how important this day is. Yes. And and how we really shouldn't be putting our own self-worth around a day that was repackaged, repurposed. Yet again. Yet again. Yet again. <laughs> from from something else. Yes. And you know, we uh we, we, we dive into all this stuff and we uh we, we have a wall that's coming and <laughs> it's gonna be a wall of connections. We're looking very much forward to doing that. But you know, yet again I was very um well not surprised, but so my ears pricked up again when researching Valentine's Day and the name Nimrod appeared again because Nimrod goes all the way back thousands of years to pagan rituals and paganism. So yeah. much like uh, with Christmas and New Year's and all these other things that, that we've talked about already, Valentine's Day goes back to the same thing, Yeah, essentially. Yep, yep. All tied, all tied into this one guy. Mm-hmm. He's showing his head again. He's showing his face again and yet another... And yet another holiday. So you got, I, I have a lot of questions for Nimrod. Like he was a busy dude. <laughs> he he was, was a very busy dude. And he was, yeah, he was very worshipped. Well, I was just going to say like, and I also want to get a few tips. Like <laughs> he was worshipped by a lot of people. So yeah. like, how does one achieve that? You know? Yeah. How does one become a Nimrod? <laughs> Is it so- is it something to do with rods? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Nim's rod? So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm so confused. Okay. So did you want to like go through, because there is a little bit of um, like, there is some, some real history here about yeah. how Valentine's Day came about. So did you want to run us through what the initial, uh, what the initial celebration was for? Yeah, so St. Valentine's Day is actually, according to a legend as it has it, uh, and there are many legends, as mm-hmm. I was researching, there are many, many legends, but this is the one that kind of, it had it had more legs, I feel, than, than some of the other yeah. ones. Um, and it is tied to Lupercalia, an ancient Roman festival, which was celebrated every year in honor of Lupercus, the god of fertility and also known as the god Faunus, and also to Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome. So it was all around this festival around Lupercus. Yep. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And I guess people out there watching, listening right now might be wondering, well, you know, what's Faunus? What's what's Lupercus? What what, what is all of this stuff? And so... uh, a brief explanation, a Roman god of the flocks and shepherds as a protector of the cattle, Lupercus means he who wards off the wolf. And he has the head and a torso of a man, but his hind quarters and horns are of a goat. So there you go. And we see that goat symbology quite a lot throughout history as well. Um, yes. Uh, he was considered a symbol of uh, the quality or power of producing uh, abundantly and fruitfulness and fertility because of his lustful nature. So, uh, and then that goes into Lupercalia, which please, you go on to explain what Lupercalia, the festival actually was. Oh, (laughs) well, the thing is, it reminds me a lot of the um, pagan rituals around Christmas. Mm -hmm. And what, and what happened around that time, because um, this, this festival, um, so Lupercalia was his festival as the Luperci uh, Mm -hmm. depicted him where, okay, so, this guy was the head of a goat. Like he was goat man, essentially. I don't know if anyone ever had that, that uh, scary story of like goat man's going to come and steal you. I actually had nightmares of this guy. So when I was, when I was reading this, I'm like, Oh my God, goat man, he's coming. So there was, what it was, was it was a fertility thing. Mm -hmm. It was all around fertility and it was uh, it was for the spring equinox, like the, the days were getting longer and spring was coming and, mm-hmm. you know, the winter was ending. So in the spring is rejuvenation. Spring is rebirth. So it was a fertility 
around the spring and rebirth. So what, what it essentially was, was it was women who were already pregnant, if they were so um, honored enough to have this thing happen to them, they would have an, an easy birth. Or if they were having issues becoming fertile, mm-hmm. like if they had fertility issues, they would become, they like this, 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 um, what do I want to call it? Ritual, mm-hmm. one would call it. Yeah. The infertile would become fertile. Right. So what did they do? They would sacrifice goats and a dog. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm really concerned for all animals at stake. Yes. But goats and one dog. Mm. I I just found that very, very odd that there's many, many goats, but only one dog. So the goat and the dog were said to be known for their strong sexual instinct. Mm -hmm. So, of course... This made the logical choice of sacrificing them because you know when things when <laughs> when when a creature is good at something, you know why not sacrifice? Right. It? <laughs> of course, it only makes logical sense to uh, to kill the things that we need and we like and that are, that are doing good things. Yeah. Right, of exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, right. So what they would do is they would they would sacrifice these animals. They would take the blood, smear it on the forehead of two young men. And then wipe it off with a ball of wool dipped in milk. I don't know if it was goat milk. I didn't get like, they didn't explain any further what kind of milk I, I, in my head, I automatically went to goat milk, but that's just me in my head. Mm -hmm. Um, And then these men wearing just the skin of the goat and like a little something around (laughs) their somethings. Like a little maple leaf or something. Yeah would go around striking women with the skins of the goat. And this ritual of the striking of the women with the goat skin was said to be the thing that made them fertile. Mm -hmm. Women were lined up in droves to have this happen to them. Mm -hmm. Because I guess, well, I guess it still is in society today. Like if you're a woman and you don't have children by the time you're 30, well, you're just, you know, you're crazy done. cat lady yeah 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 crazy cat lady forever mm-hmm. um that they just didn't want that to happen like they didn't they needed to to be reproducing so if they were having issues this was the time for it to for it to happen yeah so the ceremony uh this the ceremony of the festival was intended to secure for ter- fertility and keep out the evil yeah now I don't know about you, but just my mind goes to, if you want to keep out evil, don't sacrifice animals. Well, you know, I've never understood how an evil act keeps evil away. Because wouldn't doing something evil draw something evil in? I Exactly. Like, that's just how my brain works. I don't know the yeah. answer to that, but that's just how my yeah. brain works. Like, you do something evil, then something evil is going to happen. Like That's right. Do like something good like. and something good's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it absolutely makes sense that you would keep them alive and actually just yeah. worship those animals yeah. and treat them nicely instead of sacrificing them. But yeah. that, that's just me. And that's just me. Yeah. Um, but the other thing, too, is, you know, there's so many connections here too, because it says Lupercalia is also said to be connected to the ancient Greek festival uh, of Arcadian Lycaea and the worship of Pan. And who's Pan? Well, we need to ask. Not pots and pans. Pan is the name of this uh, deity or whatever. So Pan can be traced back to the sun god Baal. The horned god Baal is also known as Nimrod. Nimrod was the original Lupercus. And there we go back to Nimrod, who we talked about earlier, but has been at the source of many and many a pagan ritual. And, uh, and once again, honoring the sun. Once again, honoring the sun. And, you know, uh, and even, you know, and Nimrod's connected to Babylonia as well. So, so yeah, in ancient uh, pagan Rome, the month of February was sacred to Juno, also known as Februa. She was the Roman goddess of fever, of love, marriage, and women. Her feast day also fell on February 15th. Yeah, so they would have the um the 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 skinning the the goats and the dog and the and the thing of the women 
in the morning and then in the afternoon they would have the festival of juno mm -hmm. um no this is where it gets um it goes it goes a little interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, different words, different ad uh, adjectives can fly around here. You know, some would say fun. Yeah. Some would say, some would say uh, out there. Some would say interesting. So there's a lot of adjectives to describe the next bit. Yeah. Blasphemy, some people would call it. <laughs> a Wednesday, some other people would call it. <laughs> <laughs> If people aren't going to know what we're laughing about, but you will in a second. Yeah, so you will. Uh, I'll, I'll let you describe this bit. Okay. So what they would do is they would, uh, all, the, all the single ladies would be paired off with the men. And how they would do this was that all the ladies would put their name in into a box. And then the young gentleman would come and pick out a name of the box and that gal was his gal for the night, for the for the um, for the night's entertainment. She was his, so mm -hmm. he was he was the lucky guy that was that pulled her name. And for that night, they were technically partners. Mm -hmm. And what happened within that night was uh, because it was a uh, a festival of fertility. Well, you had to test that sucker out, <laughs> and. <laughs> There was there was drinking, there was partying, and there were orgies. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it was a, it was a the, the whole the whole premise of it was, you know, to put it in today's context, put the keys in the bowl, have a mass orgy, and test your fertility, yep. see how it goes, yep. take it for a spin. Yep. Um, and so yeah, like it, it really was. Uh, first of all, get the women ready. They need to be struck with this fertility thing, which they wanted. It wasn't a, a punishment or anything. They actually nope. wanted to be struck with it so they could be fertile. Yes. And then yeah. go pick out your man out of the, or the men would go and pick out the lady out of the box and mm -hmm. have at it. Go for it for yeah. the night and uh, yeah. see what happens. See if you can get some kids out of it. Yeah. Well, apparently some of these couples would be together for the year until the next one rolled around. Mm -hmm. And some people even got married out of it. Like they actually had marriages yeah. out of it. So it, it worked for them. Obviously they kept doing it. It, it worked for them. And if this wasn't your, if this wasn't your guy or not your girl, well, you had next year to try again. Yeah, exactly. So, so. It's really interesting, though, that uh, and, and I'm sure by now people can see where the connections are coming in to, you know, Valentine's Day and the way things are, you know, happen today with Valentine's Day letters and notes and, you know, all these types of things. Um, but isn't it just it, it, when, I, when we, we first came across this, I was so just like, huh, of course, it came from this. Like, of course, it came from something like this. Um, yes. But there's another ingredient that, that has to be put into Valentine's Day. And again, we see this repeated in history so often that Christianity uh, came along because let's not forget that Constantine, the Roman emperor who essentially merged Christianity or popularized Christianity, um, he had to not only appease uh, his own people who still believed in those pagan gods and stuff, but he also had to make the Christians happy as well mm -hmm. as he tried to merge it together and make uh, a new religion being Christianity, really, like what we know today. Mm -hmm. And so yet again, he had to merge this ritual with something that made sense and that the Christians could live with so that it could continue and so that he could have that uh, support from both sides, I guess. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so one rumor is that Claudius II, um, he opposed. So when when all of this was happening, he came, he rocked up, and he opposed, he opposed all this, because what was going on was that the men were marrying very very quickly, mm -hmm. and because to be drafted into the war, they were only taking single men. Right. Yeah. Because they said single men are better soldiers because they mm. have nothing to loot. Like there's there's no one relying on them to come yeah. home. So they're it's it's honestly horrible the way they treated people. Like, oh, you have no one waiting for you at home. 
fine. You know, we'll send you out then. So yeah. they were just better soldiers, better fighters, but men were, were marrying at such a rapid rate to avoid the draft that yeah. he actually banned marriage. He said, no more marriages. Uh -uh, but, no more. Yeah. So the question at hand now is if it was banned, if this, if this dude banned the marriages, when did it become um, a mainstream thing that is something we had to do when it was something that was opposed of so long ago? Mm -hmm. What was that tipping point? Yeah. Well, that's a really good point about the, the war efforts and stuff and, and, and marriage tying in. But I'm wondering, because, you know, when we talk about it merging with Christianity, Christianity is all for marriage, right? Like it's yeah. mar marriage is sacred and, you, you know, no sex before marriage and all that, all that jazz. So as, as it morphed into Christianity, um, and I'd, what I'd, actually what I'd like to know is, when did they change the, the rule that married men could go to war as well? Like, because that seems like oh. the key to allowing marriage, you know, to occur and Valentine's Day and Christianity yeah. to be okay with it if those men are allowed to go to war when they're married. Love to know what that point in, in history was. But um, really, really interesting. Um, so, that you know, it goes on to, uh, to talk about Valentus as well. Valentus of Tunny, according to legend, used to marry Christian couples in secret. It was said he uh, wore a ring with Cupid on it so that people would know who he was. When he was mm -hmm. exposed, he was caught, tortured, and beheaded. Later, he became a martyr and the patron saint of true love and marriage, who we know as Saint Valentine. Yeah. Uh, yeah Valen sorry, Valentine has a few uh, different martyrs that kind of, like, they're Saint Valentine. And, and there, there's a couple other ones that were just martyrs and um, Pope... Oh, geez. Um, Jealousis. And I just thought it was a really odd thing that yes. his name was Pope. Did you catch that? I did. Oh I'm like, what dude, were you jealous? Yes. And this is why all this happened? He's the most jealous dude in all the land. Yeah. Yeah. And he just didn't like any of it. So he had to bring it all to an end. And he's like, no, 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 no. Like, we can't, we can't have these orgies. I was because... just going to say, did he not get invited to the orgies? <laughs> that That's what I was thinking too. He's like, because no one's <laughs> inviting me. No one wants me there. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get the invite no one sent me a dm nothing. <laughs> nothing so if i can't go neither can you <laughs> yep if i can't have the fun no one's having the fun yeah exactly so there's this pope uh jealous um he was the, he was the one who who executed this this dude that was going around marrying people because he was marrying people in secret and obviously yep. that that just couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So when this, when Valentinus, the, the, the gentleman that was going around marrying people in secret, when he was waiting to be executed, the story goes, and this is one of the stories, because there's many, many other stories um, that go to tie into the right. first Valentine letter. Yeah. Apparently what happened was he fell in love with a jailer's daughter and he wrote her a letter on the day that he was being executed. And his execution date was February 14th. Mm -hmm. And he signed it, your Valentine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, and that's where that they claim that that's where it all came from. Right. Yeah. So of course, Jealousis got all jealous. And he's like, you know, they, they called him a martyr. They, they killed him then said he was a martyr. And yeah. now he's St. Valentine. And now we're going to do all of these beautiful things because he wrote this letter. He was the saint of marriage and blah, blah, blah. Yeah funny how in life they didn't like it but as soon as you're dead oh my goodness you're you're a saint and a martyr yep what <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah exactly like and look none of that makes any sense at least not to me no. none of that makes any no. sense but um you know and, and i still I, all of these names are very curious to me like jealousis and you know yeah anyway very yeah. interesting but uh <laughs> so um the, the, so the church obviously, you know, is going to be the Christian church we're talking about here, the Christian church, yes, not the, not the pagan church. churches and stuff, but the, the Christian church, very, um, very against, very much against open di displays of sex and sexuality and all of those things. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, you know, this jealousous guy clearly didn't get the invite. Um, yeah. Never got to rock up with those old keys, set of keys and put them in the bowl. So <laughs> he wasn't happy. But, um, you know, they, they did this... They did this stuff for, I want to say, the core reason, like I said before, of fertility. So essentially really to, uh, to continue the human race, I would, you would say, like to yeah. have babies and stuff. Um, now, there's a, there's a very much a, uh, an overtone or a connotation in society that pagan things are bad. Now, yes. I would say leave that up to your own intuition to tell you whether something's wrong or right or not or or how you feel about it because just because someone says pagan things are bad doesn't make it so right it doesn't make it so and if we want to if we want to you know go both ways here we could say let's have a look at christianity and you could look at christianity objectively and say holy shit that's bad like that's not a good thing with all the things that christianity's done and caused over the years so Mm. you know and of course we're just looking at a um uh, one day here and one example, but if you look at a uh, an orgy festival and say that's bad just because it's pagan, well, is it that bad? You know, like the Christians had witch trials and all these things. Yeah. No, I don't know. I I take an orgy over a witch trial any day. You know, yes. If it's this yeah. guy on trial, so yeah. Um, it's very much up to people to decide for themselves. I feel. Absolutely, absolutely, and I feel like when. When um, ancient, when the when the Rome when Rome fell and the Christianity became the more popular vote, mm-hmm. that I I just the mindset was just so different and just so very. I feel I almost I just want to say closed off. Mm-hmm. It's it's almost like they wanted to make it proper to the point of. You can't sneeze the wrong way without being told you're improper, you're unclean, you're, yeah. you're whatever, whatever it can be. It's it was almost like the power trip was too much, mm. and they could control everything, and so they did. Yeah, because I don't see anything wrong with this fertility thing, except for the goats and the dog. That's my they only issue. the animals issue. alone. Yeah, my only issue with it, other than that, people showed up willingly. Mm-hmm. They participated willingly. Yep. And um, I guess people that, that were looking for love could have possibly potentially found it that day. Yeah, but the key point there, great point, because it was consensual willing, you know, people were willing yeah. to do these things. But the key part too is just because you were paired with that person for the orgy that year doesn't mean you were stuck with that person the rest of your life. Right. It wasn't right. a, it wasn't a betrothal it wasn't like a a marriage where no. you're with that person forever it was a it like was it was almost, yeah it's almost a try before you buy type deal and yeah. and, and being key part like you said consensual so yeah. what's wrong with it i don't get it I, I don't see what's wrong with it apart from the animal stuff of course but yeah yeah i i'm not understanding i i i just don't under know i just don't understand um so the church did uh, did not like the displays of sex, and and if so, really even anything undignified was mm. banned immediately. So uh, the fifth in the fifth century, uh, Pope Jealousus declared February fourteenth the day. So he changed it from the fifth from the fifteenth to the fourteenth to coincide with Saint Valen, like Valentinus's death date, mm-hmm. and. He, he um, changed the Feast of Juno from February 15th um, to the 14th because both those things happened on the 15th and called it Valentine's Day. So it could be associated with um, the martyrs, by yeah. all the martyrs by the name of Valentine. Because mm-hmm. there, were, there were like right. three or four other yes. Valentine, Valentine martyrs. So he's like, we're just going to tie them all in together and we're going to do this thing. And call so it Valentine's Day, up, obviously. And call yeah. it Valentine's Day. We're just going to change the day just by one, mm-hmm. just by one day. And that's what they did at Christmas as well. They yes. moved it just a few days it. later. Yep. They moved the orgy just a few days later yeah. to take it away from the supposed the, the, from the supposed birth of Jesus. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> oh, look, you know, you got it. These uh, these pagan people, you've um, you got to give them some, one thing. Like they like fun, right? They, they do. They they like a bit of fun. It's just they orgies do. everywhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, one thing that I find super interesting too is, uh, and it ties back to what we were, were start saying at the start about all the money and the commercialism and all these things. Mm -hmm. And that's the symbols too of the day, which are super interesting. You know, roses, red roses, Cupid, uh, love hearts, chocolates, you know, all those types yeah. of things. But um, the red... Diamonds. Diamonds. Oh, yeah. I heard they're a girl's best friend. Probably not, <laughs> probably not a dude's best friend. <laughs> no, not as well as best friend. Oh, that's just, yeah, sure. not the bank account's <laughs> best friend. Um, but the red rose. So Venus, the, the Roman goddess of love, beauty, fertility, and sexual amorality, uh, as in prostitution, uh, her Greek name is Aphrodite. So, you know, we've all heard these names before, like Venus, Aphrodite, you know, all of this stuff. Uh, she yep. was married to Vulcan. Uh, Venus is the mother of Cupid. Her favorite flower was red rose, which was associated with the red rose and love. So uh, you've got the, all of these connections here and Greek and Roman mythology are very much interchangeable in a way because yeah. there's usually a Greek god that matches the Roman god, like in the same position with a different name. So There's a counterpart, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I do, uh, I do see how that happens, you know, especially when you take it back to uh, Nimrod and, uh, and Babylon and stuff like that because they, they started worshipping, started out worshipping the same the same dude. So, right. And, and it all kind of spawned from there. But um, so Aphrodite and, you know, Vulcan, Venus, all of these things. And so Cupid, uh, Cupid was the, um, the little cherub or the, so they, so they claim was a little cherub, mm -hmm. but uh, do you want to explain to us what, uh, who Cupid really was? Well, Cupid was a pagan God. Mm -hmm. So legend goes, um, and yep, his mother was Venus, father was Mercury. Um, so Mercury was had the Greek name of Hermes. Mm -hmm. So his counterpart was Hermes, and he was the messenger of the gods. And Venus being the, the uh, goddess of love, mm -hmm. essentially, so the love messenger. So their love child was the love messenger. Mm -hmm. So he is, so as when we when we think of Cupid, we think of a little cute little baby with a little bow and arrow, and he's going around and he's shooting everybody. And if you're shot with his golden tipped arrow, well, mm -hmm. then you're going to fall deeply, deeply in love. Now there are you know rumors that say you fall in love with the next person you see, or you actually fall in love with your one true love. Like it's yeah. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Um. Yeah, so that's where his little his little piece comes into it because they needed to tie in they needed to tie in the love. That's yeah. how they needed to do it. They're like, how can we do this? Yeah. But he was a pagan god because he was the love child yes. of these two. Yep. And like of and he's not a little cherub. He no, he's not a little cherub. He he did have yeah. a, like, you know, allegedly had a bow and arrow and everything like that, yeah. but um and, you know, he was framed as always having the positive message. Always going to make yeah. you fall in love. But yeah. there's, also, there's also reports that he was, um, he was a manipulator. So yes. he would manipulate and, um, you know, send a message of love that wasn't necessarily true. Uh, or he would make people uh, fall in love that shouldn't have felt fallen in love or suited a political end, basically. And so, therefore, it would start wars, it would do this, it would do that. So, like, my mind goes to, and, and, and I'm not saying that, that this part of history is related to Cupid and, and, and what we're talking about, but just as an example, if you think of the story of Helen of Troy, so, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> uh, they go to make peace with the Greeks and Helen of Troy is there. One of the Greeks goes to bed with Helen of Troy they go back, and now a big war starts between the Greeks and the Trojans. And so Helen of Troy is a perfect example of that. Did Cupid shoot one of them or both of them with his arrow and make them get it on and cause this ginormous war between the Trojans and the Greeks? I think you might be onto something there. Well, I mean, I just thought of that as an example. You blew of... my mind, yeah. <laughs> but you just blew my mind. Like, yeah, you're absolutely right. And they, well, that's just one example of a war started because of, quote unquote, love. Love. And, yeah. uh, you know, that little floating cherub with a leaf over his nuts, Cupid. Like, 
Yeah. Not so cute. No, no, they that they did say that. But the thing is, if you're looking at at different gods and stuff, well, yeah, they they there were tricksters. Just because you're yes. a god doesn't mean that you're you know you're you're everything. Like you you're, well, you do doesn't... no wrong, and you, we all need to bow at your feet. Some mm-hmm. of them are real tricksters. Some of them are real really evil. Yeah, really really evil. So. You know, why, why are yeah. we just trusting this little thing to be shooting <laughs> us in the heart to, and we're trusting him yeah. to lead us in the right direction. No, I'll trust my own heart. Thank you. Yeah. I take the arrow out of it. Off. Take the arrow yeah. out of it. You little bastard. Like I don't, <laughs> you just shot me. Why am I trusting I you? Like it. <laughs> it, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. But, um, you know, you're right. Like we, and it's the same with, um, you know, we, especially with Greek and, uh, and Roman, mythology god mythology like there was all these feuds between the gods and like you know um this one didn't like that one and you know poseidon and zeus had arguments and you know the god of war would have an argument with this one because they had some you know political end and then you've got all those demigods of like hercules and just all you know it's just they are not like this you know they are all good above everything and they always do what's what's so right for everybody no yeah no 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 but for the church to disregard them to ch- cuz i don't know like it just you could, they could have easily said, yes, these people do exist. And these, you know, it did happen, but we, as we do in society, we don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. You don't need to erase it. Like that, that's Mm -hmm. where I get really confused is like, why would you need to erase it? Why, what are you erasing? Are you erasing some of your past nonsense that (laughs) you don't want brought up because now you're trying to come across as this, this holier than thou person but were you wanting to be in the orgy and this is where it all came from? Oh, of course. It's definitely, you know. It's may, all tied to the orgy. It's all tied <laughs> to the orgy and not getting an invite. That's what, that's what has caused all of this. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I think, they, I think they, it does come back to, you know, they wanted to merge it. They were looking for, especially Constantine, because he was the big pusher of Christianity, like as we know it today. And he wanted to, he, he needed the popularity. He needed both sides, so the pagan supporters and the Christian supporters to be able to come together under one new religion. And to do that, he had to merge some of these orgies and stuff together um, and frame it in a different way so that everyone could get on board with it. Because mm-hmm. then there wouldn't be the division. It would just be everyone's included. But the, the thing is that, Today, the, the, mm. the, the, you know, especially Christianity are so quick to distance themselves from that history and say, oh, paganism, that's horrible. It's nothing to do with mm. that. How dare anyone say that the Bible's got anything pagan in it? Yet it's huh. littered with pagan rituals and yeah. things all through it. So, um, you know, again, it's just a mass hypocrisy on yeah. the side of religion. Yeah. So... Moving back to the Valentine's Day we know. Mm -hmm. How did we get from picking names, taking keys out of the bowl? (laughs) Mm -hmm. We went from taking keys out of a bowl for fertility and the name of fertility to I've been with someone for a month. And according to this article, I need to buy them uh, 24 long stem roses, a box of chocolates, and take them out to a fancy restaurant. Whether or not they have allergies to those flowers or not, whether or not they like chocolate or not, whether or not that that's their favorite restaurant. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to do all these. How do we go from that to that? It's a good point. It's a really good point. And I feel like, yeah, I feel like the green stuff really comes, you know, into this part of it because at some stage, the devil's lettuce or money? (laughs) Both. But at some stage, well, money. At some stage, at some stage, someone, someone said, someone, someone went, hmm, I can make a shitload of money off this. Yeah. I can really make a lot of money off this. Yeah. And they just used the symbols that were already important, the roses and the chocolates yeah. and the cupids and the... the, and the hearts and, yeah. Yeah. And so they just, they just said, right, 
we can make a lot of money out of this. So much, same as Christmas. You know, Christmas was the same. Yeah. That was, or it was a decision yeah. to be, make it commercial and make money out of it. So yeah. this is very much so the Valentine's same. Valentine's Day was too. Exactly. Like, and yeah. again, you know, you look deeper beneath all of this. It's not about anything meaningful. It's not. It's, no. it's not about no. love. It's not about, you know, being grateful for your partner and that, any of that stuff. It's not about that at all. It's just about money and selling stuff. Because, like, I don't need to give my partner uh, a mug that says, love you, to let them know that. And I don't right. need to do that on Valentine's Day. No. No problem giving the mug, uh, uh, you know, or a gift of any kind. That's right, fine. Right, But it doesn't have to be on that day, and it doesn't have to be with the merchandise that they put on the shelves for us to buy either. Yeah. Well, I don't know when it started for you guys, but up here, um, I went shopping two days after New Year's, and Valentine's Day stuff was already out. Mm-hmm. January 3rd, yeah. Valentine's stuff was out. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. Well, it was probably similar for me, like here, but yeah. I just didn't notice it. Like, I just no. didn't pay attention to it. But, yeah, that would sound right. It would be about the same here. They normally, as soon as one holiday is finished, the next thing's up. Yeah. So, like, well, I definitely know that um, Easter merchandise was up straight after New Year's. What e- is it? Easter eggs and hot cross buns and, oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yep. And that's two months away still. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, with Valentine's Day, <laughs> you know, who does it benefit? Jewelry stores, they mm-hmm. they get a huge benefit out of it. And, of course, once you get into that cycle of, you know, okay, people, it's Valentine's Day. Everybody go and buy lots of stuff for those people. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, those big companies get into that cycle and stick with it. So they invest lots of advertising and then it just yeah. keeps rolling. It's like a snowball effect. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger as they add they make more money off it. They reinvest more of that money into the advertising again and make the advertising bigger and the expectations mm-hmm. bigger on people to say, well, oh, geez, what are you going to get for her this year? What's it going to be? Yeah. It better be good. You got it. Got a top last year. Mm-hmm. You got a top last year. Now it's gone up. So I was looking at the trajectory of how much people spend. So I went back to 2010 and it was 14.2 billion in 2010. Okay. So we're now at 27 billion. Mm-hmm. That's how well advertising has worked. Yeah. That's how well they have mind melded people into thinking that you need to top yourself every year and you need to blow her socks off and you need to. But what I don't see is ladies what to get him for Valentine's Day. I rarely see that. It's usually men, you don't, don't, you don't want to disappoint this year. It's like, well, what if what if the dude doesn't want to be disappointed this year yeah. what if he's been disappointed for the last 15 years and he's like <laughs> you know what i've had it it's her turn this year yeah get nothing i'm getting her what she gave me <laughs> nothing <laughs> yeah like, it's, it's true. really turned into this well the man has to do it it's true it's and true. i don't know i i man and then you have those people who break up with people just before valentine's day so they don't have to spend the money you have people who get into relationships february 1st so they're in one for Fe- for february 14th it just turns into this whole it's a using of people mm-hmm. let's have a holiday where we can use other people to boost my own self-esteem yeah exactly yeah and it's and you're right about what you say with the measure of a relationship, you know, because mm. there's a lot of people split up on Valentine's Day as well and yeah. and all of that because the gift wasn't good enough, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, the, it's they put that expectation in people's minds and, and we can say mostly women, not all, but mostly yeah. those expectations are in women's minds of, yeah. oh, it's Valentine's Day. I wonder what he's going to do. I wonder what he's going to get. I wonder, you know, what it's going to be this year that he can yeah. do to show me how much he loves me. Yeah. And I have a huge problem with that because what makes that one day of the year any different to any other day of the year? Right. And isn't it, look, this is an actual question. Isn't a relationship a two-way thing? Aren't there two people in a relationship? Last time I checked. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to check my notes again, but I'm sure there's two people in a relationship. Yeah, pretty sure. So why would it be one, you know, declaring and, and doing these grand gestures to show their love for the other, but not in reverse? Yeah. I 
I don't know. And why was the why was it the young men got to choose the name out of the box, add the keys out of the bowl? Why mm -hmm. couldn't the ladies choose? Because mm -hmm. the ladies got removed from it when they moved when they they changed it. They said, okay, like now the men are going to pick out the names of saints, and they're yes. going to um, they're going to pretend to be that saint. Yeah, they, they're going to emulate um, that the life of that saint. Yeah. Yeah. So the ladies got completely removed out of it, and now the men are behaving like saints. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But in one of those articles, when you said, you know, if the gift isn't good enough, she's going to break up with you. Well, in one of those articles, it was because it was giving, um, how, how long were you in yeah. the relationship for compared to what you need to get them? And they said at the three, three, six months to a year phase, um, you, you've already met the parents and you've already exchanged the, the nudie pictures. So you have to get it right because if she breaks up with you, she's got the dick pics. I was like, you are setting, like talk about instilling fear into people. Right. Yeah, of course. But it also, what it does, and I didn't think about this before, but writing that in an article like that, it also, uh, you know, tells everyone that it's okay to be sending dick pics. Like, right. yes. and the, the, by three yeah. to six months, if you haven't sent a dick pic, it's not a real relationship, people. Like, no, no. <laughs> you, nope. you got to pull the ripcord and get out. There's no <laughs> dick pic. <laughs> but, 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 but how, You're how, absolutely right. They made that, no, they normalized they, that. They just totally normalized it and said, you know, you know, of course, everyone, by the three to six month stage, you know, there's dick pics everywhere. Like, you know, no, there isn't. Like, no, I, there isn't. I do not, I, I do not and cannot fathom sending dick pics. I just can't. I cannot. Mm -mm. And me and, neither. And then to take it <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if you're going to send it, right? And I did say this to you before, okay? I yeah. don't understand doing it. But if you are going to do it, just own that shit, man. Like yeah. if you're going to send it, take a snap of it. If you're going to do that, hopefully you've got a big zoom. But if you're going to do that and send it, just own it. It's out there. Yeah. You're not you're not getting it back. Don't yeah. let it be a threat that can be held over your head. Like, oh, if you break up with me or you don't get a good enough gift, I'm going to tell everybody and show everybody these dick pics. Don't do that. Like, don't, don't let yeah. that be the case. Just own it and go, yeah, I sense it, whatever. Yep. There it's it is. Me. Loud and proud. Yep. If you were proud enough to send it in that moment, be proud enough that it could potentially be out there. And ladies, please don't do that. <laughs> right. For shame. For shame. Mm -hmm. Because we wouldn't like it if the man did it to us. Like right. we never want our our private sides held over us in the way of blackmail for right. fucking gifts. Over gifts. Like oh, well, I'm curious actually, what is the gift that uh, will hold those dick pics at bay? Like what is the gift that they said? Oh, jewelry. Oh my gosh. Really? It was jewelry, flowers, chocolates jewelry this time you up the ante with jewelry <sighs> so ridiculous i'm really hoping that people are not reading that and like honestly listening because mm -hmm. when i was reading i'm like oh, please tell me no one's like following this yeah and please 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 don't because as i said there was links to to jewelry stores there was links to to the most expensive flower shops and of course they're getting a kickback every time someone clicks on and buys they're getting the kickback like just be honest. It's a fake day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that means nothing. Mm -hmm. And if you really are so inclined to send your person flowers, do it on a Tuesday mm -hmm. afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Just because. Not in February. Just do it in. Because. Do it in March. Do it. Just do it whenever. Yeah. Whenever. Yeah. Just not on that day. Mm -hmm. Not on that day. Cause yeah, it's it's a it's a commercial day, and they're making twenty seven billion dollars in the mm. U.S. alone. That's the U.S. alone. Yeah. Well, and when you think about it too, <laughs> when you just mentioned that again, you know, when you think about it, the pagan ritual had a whole lot more meaning than what yes. the Valentine's Day today does, because they were actually it doing it for fertility and passing yep. on the human race, and you know, yep, had way yep. more meaning than today's ritual. Yeah. Hmm. Nothing. And I'm not saying, you know, you know, much like we're saying, <laughs> we hope people aren't out there sending dick pics and they're not, you know, uh, buying these gifts at, with the expectation of, you know, love. But 
by the same token, you know, we're not saying go out there and uh, start your own orgy a ceremony every year. Like if you want to do no, that, do that's up to you. Go, we'll go ahead. It's up to you, but that's not we what we're said saying. It. Yeah, we didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're we're not giving the uh, the a okay with that one. That is a personal personal decision. Exactly. But yeah, I just. I just don't like seeing people get so upset over it. I, I don't like people getting so turned out turned like turned inside out over yeah. it. And all that money spent because all restaurants up their dollar amounts. Yep. And they'll have um like a flat, it's like a dinner is just dinner. Like you don't get to really choose. It's you have like menu. a choice yeah. of yes, a set menu. Um flowers go up, I think 30%. <laughs> they go up in price just for that day. Mm-hmm. Chocolates go up, everything goes up. All yeah. the jewelry stores are just, they're just sitting there doing this, just waiting for, for everyone to come in. No, take it back. And you know, if you really want to do something, you know what I would appreciate? It was just, you know, make a card. It's, yeah. Be five again and make <laughs> a card. Yeah, but something, just something that, that actually is meaningful. If, if you're so inclined, if you're so yeah. inclined, make sure it's, it's meaningful. Well, that's my takeaway. And make sure you tell the person that, you know, everything you say on on that day, make sure you repeat it often on other days. Mm -hmm. Because I could tell my partner that I I appreciate them. I love them. All of these things every single day and then not do it on that day. And that could potentially hurt my partner's feelings. (laughs) Because I didn't say it on that day. Yeah. And I have heard women say, well, he never told me he loved me. He's like, but he tells you every other day. Not the point. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear you know, that voice makes sense to me. But um, I think, right? you, you know, you're spot on. Like, <laughs> And that's the biggest takeaway for me is a, a, a relationship that's, that's built on love should not be also reliant on an, a single Valentine's Day, you know, on a single day. It, it's got nothing to do with it as far as I'm concerned. Like... Valentine's Day could come and go and I wouldn't even notice. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me in any way because, you know, if my partner lets me know every day that I'm appreciated and loved, then great. That's, that's great. I'm happy. I don't need, I don't need a Valentine's Day thing to, to make sure that that's confirmed. You know what I mean? Like I don't need that confirmation. Yeah. And nor should anybody else. And I, and I, and I wouldn't do that to anyone else either. Like make Valentine's day a thing. Um, but yeah, like you said, if people are so inclined, you know, do something that just means something, I guess, yeah. you know, and you brought up a, an example, um, somewhere near you, like where so, well, some dude carved a bear, like it's made a, a big, oh, he a ginormous did. bear. He made a partner. snow bear. Yeah. It's massive. And he it's did massive. that for his lady, right? Yeah. He did it for his wife. And that's cool. Like I can get, yeah. I can totally get behind something like that. Yeah. Cause it's, that I can get behind. It's something that means something to them obviously and her. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. I love that. But... He made it the Coca-Cola bear. He put a little, <laughs> like so the bear cool. is so big. You almost missed the bottle of Coke <laughs> sitting, sitting in its paw, but it's got the scarf. Like he, like it is amazing. So yes. amazing. Yeah. Like how cool is that? And how long did that take him? That took yeah. him way longer with more skill and more talent than anything going and ordering flowers online. Exactly. And that's what I, you know, it's the thought and the effort to me. Yeah. And it's got nothing to do with the day either, but I can get behind all those kind of things. I think it's kind of sweet, you know, it's lovely to, yeah. for, that, that he did that and people do those things, but yeah. but that's for me where it's at. Not, not, yeah. not the, the article telling me I've got to buy this much amount of jewelry that, right. that really does yeah. nothing and shows nothing, but no, I'm also very curious um, because we've been going for a while now. I think uh, we've we've coming towards the end of this episode, but um, I'm so curious and I would love to hear what people have to say in the comments about their experiences with Valentine's day and gifts and, you know, all the things that surround it. So, yeah, that's it. We did it. (laughs) Pagan. Yep. Yep. (laughs) It is better than the real thing. Yep. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I'm off to go put my keys in a bowl. We'll see you all next week. Have a good time. (laughs) Oh, no, not interested in that. But uh, yeah, it's been a great episode. Great chat. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a bloody fantastic day out there.